And welcome back to the hot lap. We are talking Ferrari favourites for the Canadian Grand Prix. Believe it. And that is at least according to McLaren and Red Bull, citing the fact that Ferrari are favourites. But it's not only the other teams that have the confidence, it's Ferrari's own drivers having the confidence. Signed to saying we can win the title. When I say title, he's talking about the constructors' title rather than the drivers, but you never know. They're just 25 points, and also Leclerc on his title hopes as well. We'll be getting into that in a second. Speak to you soon. So, Ferrari are favourites. Yes, and especially so, and that is also according to a certain uh, papaya team and a certain drinks company team. Yes, both McLaren and Red Bull, they agree that Ferrari are favourites in Canada. This is from Formula Uno. Now, as we know, F1 has landed in Canada, and on Thursday, as in yesterday at the time of recording, we've got the usual press conferences that have taken place. The 2026 regulations were also discussed, in addition to discussions about what is now a lot closer competition. And not only is this fight heating up, but more importantly, and I think what's, what's really good for F1 fans, the fight is heating up at the top. So, Ferrari, they've currently got two wins. McLaren have one on five wins. All Max Verstappen, mind you, is Red Bull. But the fact that we are, what, you know, five, six, seven, eight wins in total. So, we're not even halfway through the F1 season. And we have had three teams win. And I believe, I think, four different drivers. We have Sainz, Leclerc, Lando Norris... And Max Verstappen win. They could be all major players. Norris has come out and said, I would say Ferrari is the favourite. As we know, they are fresh off a big win in Monte Carlo. Albeit, let's be fair, no one was really showing their speed. It was um, it was the walking pace of Grand Prix. But Charles Leclerc, to be fair to him, did dominate the weekend. And we're talking practice sessions and qualifying sessions. And it was only Oscar Piastri that realistically could, be, could get within touching distance with him all the way through, in particular, obviously, qualifying. But it did show how competitive that McLaren was. The updates brought to Miami from McLaren have now given a critical boost to what's called the MCL 38. But Andrea, team principal of the Woking team, says that there has been a better... Basis. Essentially, they're saying it's a better leap forward than expected. But the launch from Montreal circuit is different to Monaco, yes, technically a street track but it can be considered a stop and go track attacking those curbs is going to be really important alongside excellent braking and traction top speed is also going to be a main talking point especially for overtaking on race day um norris said we should be pretty close and i think it's impossible to say which of us ferrari and red bull will be in front this is what makes f1 so exciting and he said if i had to make a bet i would probably bet on ferrari which i think is favorite due to its high top speed but also because i think it can adapt better to the track so the analysis from Lauren Norris leaves some people a tiny bit perplexed since the Ferrari doesn't exactly excel in those speed traps. But in the last few events, it became quite clear that top speed may still be a weakness for the Maranello squad. However, Helmut Marco thinks similar to Lando Norris. And Helmut said the, F, the SF24 is the best on the curbs. And yes, you need to be fast, but you need to be able to be really aggressive over those curbs in Canada because if you do... Um, that's really going to cut down that lap time. And above all, Helmut said, it goes fast on all tracks. So both, I mean, both Red Bull and McLaren thinking that, yes, Ferrari are potentially going to be favourites. I don't think Ferrari are going to argue too much. And I don't think they will. So Carlos Sainz, again on Formula Uno. Ferrari, as we know, they've arrived in Canada on the back of this Monaco Grand Prix. And Sainz has explained why the Maranella team can aspire to the Constructors title. The 2024 season, it's, it feels like it's absolutely energised these last few results with, um, you know, with McLaren winning one, then Red Bull, and then Ferrari. All, and all, the, all those two teams being able to challenge Red Bull. And scientists said, all three of us are really close. Anyone can win. He said, for me, Red Bull is always a bit of a favourite. They are the ones who have won the most in recent months and years. But we will have our chances. McLaren could have taken pole in Monaco. In fact, if you if you look at all of, their, all, all of the um, sectors, Oscar Piastri didn't qualify. He would have got pole. And it means that it will be very close and it will be the same this weekend, they're saying. Science was also asked about Red Bull's main weakness, which... 
was first revealed in Singapore. Yeah, we've been talking about this for last year. Science emphasises the importance of keeping the pressure on the reigning champions. And that's something that Fred Vassar has also said. He said, I don't exactly know what the problems are, but it seems like places like Singapore, Monaco... Um, both Mui and McLaren have been extremely competitive compared to them. Then we go to Imola, maybe to Barcelona, and then they fly. Uh, they weren't exactly flying at Imola, were they? Lando Norris had a tiny chance of the win, and he always kept Verstappen just about in sight. So it'll be about maximising those opportunities on certain circuits. So... The interesting one, though, as we mentioned, is the constructors' title. Now, for our Red Bull cars, we know they all perform. They all perform, you know, fairly, fairly similar. But the results in in Monaco allowed Ferrari to close up within twenty four. Yep, that's two four points in sight of Red Bull in the constructors' championship. So the constructors' title, sign said, is feasible at the moment. We are close, even considering that I missed that basically that I missed a race and we lost a few points there. Otherwise, we could have been even closer. It's our goal. It won't be easy because Red Bull has made a very strong start to the season. Um, and it won't be easy to have a similar roster to recover all those points. As a pair of drivers and as a team, we are doing well on Saturday and Sunday. And if we continue to do this, if we continue like this, we can do it. And I kind of have to agree with agree with science. I would argue, and we said it with the red. I mean, congratulations again to Sergio Perez. Um, except, well, uh, <laughs> renewing his Red Bull contract, but. I still think that Red Bull have the weakest driver lineup of the top teams when you look at McLaren, Mercedes, and Ferrari. It's only really, I think, until you get to Aston Martin where you can potentially question who has the uh, stronger driver lineup between the two. I'd probably, I'd probably go with Red Bull on that one, though. So that, that I think, and I think that's what's going to make that's what makes it really, really interesting. And it's not only Carlos Sainz talking about titles, it's Charles Leclerc. And he's assessing his title chances on a story on F1 on Formula1.com after that Monaco win. But he is keeping his feet firmly on the ground. Yes, that Monaco win was really, really emotional for him. Everyone at Monaco and us and some of us watching at home. But his win alongside uh, Carlos, uh, Carlos Sainz's podium finish be a slightly lucky one um and red bull struggles in monte carlo saw him slash verstappen's lead to just 31 points so you know that's only six points away from you know being within a win ferrari and as we know are now just 24 points that significant point swing have led ferrari ambassador mark Genet to argue that the thoughts of a championship were now unavoidable for the marinara outfit asked about these comments uh, as the paddock reconvened in Montreal. Leclerc said, I'm not thinking about the championship yet, but definitely the target is to be able to win races every weekend. We are, I think, improving more than anybody else in the last seven, eight months. I think they have. And we need to keep focusing on the process more than on the outcome. The good outcome will only be the result of hard work and all we've done. He carried on saying, we are really focusing on the process, on our weaknesses, and how we can optimise every single aspect of the car. By doing just that, we'll get to the point where we where we are in contention to win every single weekend. That's, of course, the target, because as much as it felt good to win in Monaco, now we need to turn the page and look at what's ahead. We want to win the World Championship. That's the target. And for that, we still have to do steps forward. So yeah, at one point, Leclerc says, no, uh, we're not looking at the title. And the other, he's like, yeah, yeah, I think we are. Um, it's going to be interesting. I think if a non-red if a non -red ball car wins and legitimately wins this weekend, we maybe start talking more about the title. But the big test is going to come, I believe, at the, in, at, the, at the Spanish Grand Prix. That is absolutely where you are going to have the big test because if the car works well in if the car works well in Spain for Ferrari and or McLaren, I honestly think it's but I think it's gonna I think it's gonna work well everywhere, if I'm honest. Absolutely. So a couple of things though that could derail the Ferrari team and make it well slightly more unpredictable. Well, we could even even have like an outside person win. Imagine a Williams win. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Not impossible, unfeasible maybe, but not impossible because. And I'm gonna I'm just quickly gonna share this with you. We've got the weather. This is uh, the Met weather um, for Saturday. I think you can see it's a. Uh, at the moment, 40%, and then uh, you know, it goes up to 60% between 1 o'clock 
and eight o'clock in the evening. Fair enough. And then Sunday's pretty much the same. From eleven o'clock in the from eleven o'clock it's forty. Two o'clock it's sixty percent. And it remains 60 all the way till 5 o'clock. So during the race at start, there's a more than half chance, you know, that there is going to be rain, either qualifying and or the race. And I suspect we, we won't. We all, we've already had that thunderstorm in practice one, where I'll share the I'll share the times with you here, where Norris was fastest, Sainz second, Leclerc third, Hamilton fourth, Verstappen only fifth. But they pretty much only, a few went on the wets, a few went on the inters, I think, slicks may have been in play kind of like towards the end but the big kicker is yeah uh i mean you can't really tell anything there practice two could it be wet could it be dry no one really knows um, some some people are saying it's going to be wet some people are saying it's going to be dry but if that's the only dry running we have it there is a chance that that will be the only dry running we have this weekend and a lot of people um poor jack Duran was out there where did he finish he finished right in the back didn't he uh uh, yeah, he only did three laps and finished 19th. Not even a timed lap. Um, because they want to save the inter. They want to save the race. They want to save the tyres for the race. Which I completely... Which, you know, let's be fair, is completely understandable. Anyway, if you liked what you see and you want more Formula 1 content, subscribe. You can even hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every time we have a video out. We not only cover Formula 1, we also cover where we can... Uh, uh, rally and um, the touring car, which is again this weekend in Thruxton. And we also, I'm trying to cover IndyCar, but sometimes I'm at the moment, I'm only we're, we're only one, I'm only one person, so it gets really, really difficult. Anyway, I digress. So that's enough about me. Speak to you soon. Thank you very much.